We're here in Yosemite, and we want to welcome Ron and Marlies to America. Hey guys, and of course our our good friend Eric here. We decided we'd do a little video. He might have something important to say. We'll find out. Let me kind of do a quick pan here, show people what we're working with. Hmm? Hey, quiet down, kids. You're gonna have to behave. You'll be in the truck in a minute. <laughs> this is from Glacier Point, by the way, out of the valley and kind of away from most of the people. Eric, what do you got to share, brother? We have to stand kind of close so we don't get the wind interrupting. The I'll do that. Idea here, maybe even closer than that. You don't have to get me. You can get the. You the just, point is, you just talk, and I'll worry about that. All right. <laughs> Half dome. Yosemite, California, USA, but it looks like Baghdad. It looks like Bet Gimel Dalit. The Hebrew word that means cloaked. Camouflage. Camouflage. Concealed. In, concealed in disguise. Where we get the English word baggy, like to be wrapped up in loose clothing so you can't see what it really is. And as you'll notice, what was ancient days the other half of that Talk rock has been sheared off, lost. Where'd it go? Well, Yosemite Valley is down there, and there's a river in the bottom, but you can't find the remnants of that. Now, whether it was broken into crumbs and scattered for so many miles, there, there's no chunks that remain. And so all you have is this phantom missing half. Well, in studying the Paleo alphabet, Paleo Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph is that missing phantom. And it's the bet, the universe, that we have here, that we see. And so there's that scripture verse that says, the heavens declare the glory of Elohim. Human voice acknowledges him, gives him praise and honor. But he hid himself behind what is manifest. So the silent letter Aleph speaks of what's missing, which is who, who and where is the creator. So he might be a Martian, he might be some guy from some other dimension of some galaxy. He never told us, he just said, I'm the guy that made this place. So just like there's a bet, an object, cloaked, camouflaged, con something is concealed. So the interesting thing is if you read the Hebrew Aleph bet, so you've got the first four letters, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet. Well, when you have a three-letter verb root, which in this case would be bet gimel dalet, the aleph is a prefix letter used to literally speak of the identity and the intent of the one who's projecting the conversation. So to say that the aleph bet itself is a communication, is a word that means something. It's a long word, 22 letters, but the aleph as the first letter basically says, I am and then the other 21 letters disclose who the I am is. Or it, maybe it's projecting I will, in which case the other 21 letters are saying what the agenda, what the business, what the intent of the Aleph is. And so to see this image that looks like this cloaked figure, if I were to say, well, Aleph means I will, all we know is that it comes from the other side of this dimension, of this galaxy, of this universe, of this material cosmos. And whether it comes from the place we call heaven, or Shemayim, or whatever is beyond our reference, the bet is what we reference. Aleph is something other that we can't even describe. So for us to say, He's the creator, well that's a description. Or he's the father, well that's a description. And the Aleph is that which can't be described. Unfathomable, uncomprehensible, infinite. So to put a finite term is to put it into a bet aspect. Where's the Aleph? Can't see it. So I've, I've mentioned before about this concept that the true Aleph can't even be described as Aleph, because as soon as you say, well, it's Aleph, you've put it into a construct which is a bet, even though we're calling it Aleph. It's this interesting play on ideas. 
But whoever and whatever, for what reason, Aleph represents, the fact that the next three letters are Bet Gimel Dalet, which looks just like this, this cloaked, shrouded figure, literally means he's going to come in disguise. He's going to come hidden, concealed. And then you read the next letter, which is Hey, that means to reveal or to express. And then Vav, what's the sixth letter, number six, what is a vav? As a suffix, vav can mean he, it, or they. It's the masculine suffix. So people say, well, it's the number of man. Well, the he is the fifth letter, the feminine suffix. Is that the letter of woman? The point is, if it's the number of man, I could read aleph. I will, projecting, coming in disguise, taking into the material world, that's the bet, gimling, that's traveling as the voyager, the ambassador from the heavens to the earth, Dalit being this portal, Dalit is a door, the, the number four, and I could say, well, Dalit's drawn as a triangle, but it's a door, it's a, we, it, we think of four in earth, kind of, sort of, is this concept of four. So you got four seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall, you got north, south, east, west, you've got Earth, air, fire, water, four states of matter, uh, solid, liquid, gas, plasma. So, so Fornus speaks of our terrestrial abode. So if he is going to put himself in disguise, he being the Aleph, who would come down here cloaked, camouflaged, concealed, for the purpose of what? Hey, to show the Dalit, the door to who? Vav, the man? Then Zion? That which is cut off or that which is distinctive. And then you can read the letters backwards and forwards and you could say, well, who was it that came down here as the ambassador, the voyager, to show man the door, then read it backwards, to, to, for us to get back, Gimel, boomerang, back to the bet, the house of Aleph the father. Well, it's the one who said, I am the door, Yeshua, HaMashiach. So for Yeshua to come appearing, hey, as Vav, a man, in disguise, and then for him to say to his Talmudim, his disciples, who do men say I am? And they said, well, some say that you're John, some say you're Elijah, some say you're, you know, some, it's like, well, who do you say? And that's where Peter Kepha said, oh, in English, KJV lingo, you're the Christ, the son of the living God, and, and Yeshua said, ah, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. You must have had that revealed to you by the Ruach of Elohim. Why? Because he's in disguise. He came cloaked, <laughs> And there's no way that Peter could have figured that out. So for anybody to say, yeah, what's the matter with them crazy Jews? Don't even recognize their own Messiah. He came in disguise for no one to recognize. And that was the plan from the very beginning. No shame, no blame on anybody that did not recognize him. He said so. It's no fault of anybody 2,000 years ago or even anybody today to say, we don't recognize him. So the question is, are we supposed to worship the manifest cloaked image as our God? Yahuwah, our Elohim, said, you heard a voice. Book of Deuteronomy, he says, you saw no image, not male, not female, not an animal, not a fish, not a bird, no reptile. You heard a voice. Shema. When they said, Yeshua, hey, what's the greatest commandment? He said, Shema, hear, listen. It's a communication, words. In fact, the word Mashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach, oh yes, the anointed Messiah. But the word Shiach, also means communication, conversation, and mem means to manifest or be the one who is the, at that place. He came, Mashiach can be read as, just by reading the words in Hebrew, the manifest conversation, the communication that we can, the word mush, like the mushy, debar. that we can grab a hold of. He is the debar made tangible, graspable. So then you go to the Gospel of John, the word made flesh. The word turned into human form. Did he tell us to worship that human form as our Elohim? No, he came as the mediator, mediating the relationship. What do we do with this? Do we worship the cloaked image? You know, they tried to worship the image of an Aleph back there at Mount Sinai, and they got in really big trouble for making an image. We were told, make no image. In fact, he said, lo ye ye lecha, ye ye, don't put your hand to cause to exist or allow there exist or even permit for yourselves 
some sort of graven carved image. Well, there's a natural stone. No, it's been carved off. They say a glacier came through and did that. Who knows? Long yeah. time ago. The <laughs> point is, no image. Why, why do we need an image? Oh, he's got to look like a human being. <laughs> no, he said you heard a voice. He said in another place, no man has seen Elohim. In another place, he said to Moshe, you can't see my face. And yet he appears with a face and says, if you don't recognize me, you're going to burn in hell. Why is there this conflict? Christian mind says, acknowledge Jesus Christ is your God, and then you get to go to heaven and you weren't born in hell. <laughs> but from the Hebrew perspective of the Torah, it says, have no humanoid anthropomorphized image of your deity. Listen to his words and do what he said. What do we do with this? Yeah, we Why don't do worship do the words, we worship the one who gave us those words in and out. We miss, we're worshiping the invisible half that nobody can know. Where is it? Who is it? What's it look like? Was it bigger than that? Was it smaller than that? Was it, was it maybe at one point so big it dwarfed this? We don't know. It's all conjecture. <laughs> all we know is what we see. He did say he was the rock. <laughs> what do we you do with this? You can see a rock. <laughs> this is a very serious matter. We're confronted with this dilemma. Die, two, two options. Do we worship the invisible one and risk not worshiping the solid image who came cloaked in disguise, not wanting to be worshiped? Or do we say, oh, the real trick is we're supposed to worship the one who came as a human and if we don't worship him, we're gonna burn in hell. Which do we do? Why would he do this to us? His words say, don't do something. And then he shows up and says, you better do this. But that's the very thing he said not to do. Why would he do this? Or maybe what he said was, I'm telling you, don't worship any form, any figure, anything manifest, anything in the bet form. You're supposed to be worshiping the Aleph concept, the invisible one who's responsible for putting all this here. The maker, the Kanash, Shemayim Ve'eret, the maker of heaven and earth. The one who gave you his voice for you to listen. Shema Israel, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad. That's what we're supposed to be hearing. We're not supposed to be painting a portrait of him or carving an image or even saying he's the cloaked image and worshiping it. He told us not to do it. So for us to not do it, why should we burn in hell for not doing it? There's a problem here. This is why the Islamic believers and the Jewish believers do not regard the Christian belief. Because the Christians, I hear it all the time on the radio and in sermons, Jesus Christ is our God, whom we worship as the creator of the heavens and the earth, as our Elohim. What do we do with that information? I'm not saying he didn't come from heaven. Nicodemus, Nakadamon, recognized that the, that the Sanhedrin even knew that he came from heaven. The question is not where did he come from, or is he worthy of our esteem, our regard, our listening to. He did say, I've only come in my father's regard. I only say the things I hear him saying. I only do the things I see him doing. Yeshua never asked for us to worship him. He said we should worship his father and our father. He said it wasn't his doctrine. He said it was not his doctrine. This is a big trouble. In the, here it is, 2019, right at the edge of Sukkot here, this is a big trouble in the world right now. Who do we worship? I say if we listen to his words like he said, we should worship the invisible one. Though he determined to somehow come in a bet format, but God, in order to accomplish that which is scribed, written, in the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, that's the mission. And Aleph, he said, that which goes out of my mouth will be tovved, will be accomplished. The Aleph tovved, that which proceeds from my mouth will not return void. It will accomplish whatever I set it forth to do. That's the notion of Aleph, set out like an ox pulling a plow, set out like an arrow from the bow of the archer and hitting the target tov. He said, whatever I have purposed will be accomplished. That's Aleph will become tovved. Yeshua claimed to be the Aleph Tov when he was manifesting some sort of vision of the apocalypse, the revelation of end time things to the uh, uh, John on the Isle of Patmos. 
The point is, he claimed that his whole being and agenda was this gamut, this spectrum that could be broken down into the 22 pieces of the Hebrew alphabet. Aleph Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Zion. I will put myself into physical matter, gimeling, voyaging to the earth, revealed as a man who would be slain, Vav, Zion, to show man the door back to the Father's house. But it accomplishes something else as well. He's put into a tomb, Het, the round rock rolled in front of the tomb, Tet, sealed, held tight, Yod. Then you've got Kaf Lamed, Memnun, Samachai, and Pei, those mean something. Then Zadi, sprouting back to life, the resurrection. Then Kuf, ascending, but also coming back as Resh Shin Tav, Reshit. Resh Shin. Our Elion, exalted in the sky, as El Shaddai. He equates himself to El Shaddai, Yeshua does, in the book of Revelation. These things are a mystery. They're close, yes, they but we can see the reality. And in order to keep this particular video a little short, we won't address the Kaf Lamed, Mem Nun, Samachai, and Pei. We've done that in other videos. We could do it again here in a bit. But he was entombed in the crypt of the Chet three days and three nights. Kaf Lamed, Mem Nun, Samachai, and Pei. A group of three. Those are something about being inside the fence. If you don't keep the Moedim, if you don't read Hebrew, you're not going to see it. It's hidden within the chet, which represents the package of the Moedim. So if you don't want to keep the Moedim, if you don't want to regard the festivals, don't plan on understanding what this stuff is. I'm not saying you're going to burn in hell, Indeed. but I'm saying you won't understand what these things are and whatever perks, privileges, and benefits are to be derived for keeping his words, if and you then. won't get it. If and whatever then. they might be. If and then. The word if is... Aleph, Mem, Um. He says many times, if you listen, then, Ki, Kaf, Yod, then this will happen. Many things in the covenant between Yahuwah and Israel are the conditional of if we listen and respond. Ayin Nun Hey, the word for Yom Kippur to uh, burden yourself, to aggravate yourself, to oppress yourself, afflict yourself, it's the word to respond in communication to listening and regarding in a back and forth tete -te, you might say that's what he wants from us that's what Yom Kippur is all about Hallelujah. responding to the listening of communication with yod he vav -he. and another way to call him is eh -he -he, -he yod -he, which he said in uh, Exodus chapter 3 the burning bush tell them eh -he -he sent you the one who exists the one who causes all this to be these are big matters. I'm simply trying to say, as a very controversial issue, who do we worship? The invisible half that we know is was there that we can't determine, or the one that is manifest in camouflage, cloaked. That same word, baguette, also means to deceive and beguile. Now, why would he do that? Why would he intentionally deceive and beguile us? Sounds like the work of the devil, the <laughs> beguiler. Well, that's... There's more to that story. We'll have to talk later. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give the crowd a little view of some waterfalls down here before we switch off. A lot of people may never see this in their lives, so. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Got some living water kicking off there. Just gorgeous. There's this Myrtle is, Falls and this, Nevada Falls. I'm yeah, this is belt. late in the season, so we're missing out on the, the big part of the falls. Oops. Hallelujah. And this is a curse of earth. He's given us a taste of the kingdom. <laughs> Hallelujah, Abba.